The exhibition that you can see behind me is of children's art that I brought back from Gaza last month. Um, this is the first time the exhibition has been set up fully, but uh, we're very pleased that uh, it's had some preliminary outings with, uh, well, this is a primary school, and uh, I'm very happy with the, uh, with the reactions of the children. It's designed for children, uh, but for adults as well. Uh, there are 11 boards, about 50 pictures in all. It's called Loss of Innocence. The exhibition starts here. Uh, I'm afraid you've got a bit of me telling you uh, where the pictures have come from, uh, how I collected them up. Here's a picture of a school uh, that painted the van that they were going to be brought back to Europe in, from Gaza to Europe, but the Egyptians wouldn't allow the van out. So after a month of protest at the border, I eventually came out with them myself. Uh, good introductory. Uh, here's a map of the tininess of Gaza. Uh, the Israelis came in here, ran through here, and attacked here. But uh, the children tell it better. Uh, this is about Gaza before the war. <clears throat> we have uh, a kind of adult version of a script and a children's version of the script on every uh, a board. Uh, the invasion begins. I like this joke. Here's a tree with its backpack running away, and the child saying, we tell you here, um, uh, why is the tree running away, Mummy? And Mummy says, because uh, she doesn't want to become firewood. Uh, that's the nightmare. That was painted by a child uh, to whose grandfather's orchard was smashed in that way uh, and whose brother was killed uh, by, the, uh, by the tanks as they, uh, uh, as they uh, <clears throat> drew it. Here's a set of uh, pictures that uh, really catalogue all the various kinds of uh, machines and types of actions of the Israelis, uh, uh, including these rather nasty things that you might think are a child's invention, uh, but these are actually pilotless planes, very small, like model aeroplanes, but they're flown uh, remotely, like people playing computer games. Um, uh, bulldozers uh, um, made by Caterpillar who have offices in Britain, something that people have run campaigns about. Here yeah, we've got quite a detailed analysis of a particular battle. We can see the ambulances being attacked, uh, the headless bodies caused by dime. Some of these pictures make uh, uh, potential evidence for a war crimes tribunal, as in Darfur. Um, Mahanid and Ibrahim's board. Ibrahim and Mahanid uh, both documented, and here's their pictures, uh, and we have a, a video uh, of their interviews to run with this, uh, as we do of Zaha, who painted this picture. And, one, and, and 11, 11 years old. How many people were in his family? The first couple of kids were quite old. Mother, father, and... Five. Five plus the mother and father. And all dead? Some, some of his uncles, too, because they live next to each other, very close to each other. These are issues we discuss on the remaining boards. Uh, the psychological trauma. Uh, we. Uh, uh, well, the pictures are quite... Uh, uh, in the aftermath of the war, people remaining intense, the Israelis still making incursions, people feeling they're behind bars. Of course, the wall, the wall, the wall. Um, very, uh, quite moving poem there, translated. We don't shy away from tackling this issue of resistance. Uh, we begin with uh, to be or not to be, that is the question, um, from course, Hamlet. The children's uh, version discusses how uh, getting good marks at school can be, uh, is a kind of resistance, because it makes the children proud of themselves and shows the enemy that they will not give in to terror. When the siege first began, the marks of the children dropped very badly, but then they learned about resistance and the marks began to get better again. Do you think good marks are a way of feeling good about yourself? The children of Gaza need this kind of support. The psychological discussion of the beginning tells us, uh, explains to us that if uh, people constantly tell you uh, that you're uh, worthless, uh, nobody will uh, validate your self-esteem, 
then you have to come to accept the fact that you're worthless. And because the only people that the Gazans have to talk to are other Gazans who are all suffering the same problem, then the self-esteem uh, validation needs to be done from outside. Uh, some people find a way of uh, stepping outside of themselves with uh, humour, um, and these are excellent cartoons. Um, excellent. Uh, and then finally, the plea. The children of Gaza are asking for help. Uh, the children of Gaza are asking for help. When I talked to the artist about these people here, I thought that she meant these were the children of Gaza asking for help. But she said, no, these, <laughs> this is the world. This is uh, Americans and Europeans and Russians and, and indeed Arabs. Uh, and they're just watching while we die. They're just watching. And she wrote, the world is watching. And I said to her, the world is watching means that they're watching and perhaps they're going to do something about it. And she said, no, no, they're not. They're standing by and watching. So she changed it. The world is only watching. I think it's one of the saddest pictures. And some beautiful little uh, drawings by somebody uh, sending best wishes to Britain. Uh, they have demonstrations in Gaza too. This exhibition is supported by UNESCO. It's supported by the Ministry of Education in Gaza. It's supported uh, by the Gaza Community Mental Health Service. Uh, it's supported by three NGOs, one of which we're in partnership with. Uh, these videos of the exhibition, which here today is being set up in the Catholic High School in Chester, uh, get sent back to Palestine so that the people know uh, that, uh, that the exhibition is being viewed by people uh, and that I've kept my promise uh, to bring home their message about what they feel to the people of Britain. Thank you very much.